What's up guys? It's Mike from Job Ready English. Welcome to day one of 21. So we're going to be going through and asking and answering 21 difficult questions that I get asked. Who am I? My name is Michael Meteor. I am the founder of Job Ready English and over the last seven years I've spoken to over 25,000 international students. I've coached over 500 clients across different companies and I've coached 200 clients one-to-one -one, and over 92% of them have gone on to work in top jobs like PwC, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, Deloitte, blah, 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 and all these different companies. So what we're going to be doing is over the next 21 days, I'm going to answer all the questions that would come up for you as you go from first application to final job offer. This is something you're not going to find anywhere else. You're going to want to join us for the 21 days because when the 21 days is over, video is poof, gone. Because I want you to feel like this is urgent, like this is something that you need to be doing right now. So what's the topic we're talking about today? Let's get into it. When should you start applying for jobs? If there's a question that I get asked, I've spoken at over a hundred different events in the past seven years from like 2,000 students to say maybe 10 students in a room and they say, uh, but when should I start applying for jobs? So what I'm gonna tell, talk about today is there are three questions that you need to answer and I'm gonna tell you how to answer those questions before you start applying for jobs. What are those questions? First of all, what do you want to do? Now this is a point blank question to you as you're watching. What exactly is it that you want to do? What type of job do you want to do? What industry do you want to work in? And I'm going to give you some examples of industries. So these are kind of the 10 industries that we tend to sort of concentrate on and work around because they're the industries that employ the most graduates. Accounting and professional services, banking and finance, chemicals and pharmaceuticals, consulting, consumer goods. Consumer goods is like Unilever, L'Oreal, Mars, they produce lots of different types of goods. Engineering and industrial, investment banking, law, media, oil and energy. And of course, sorry, there were 12, retail and technology. So what industry do you want to work in? So you're probably sitting there and thinking, well, what do you mean what industry? I want to work in the same industry what my degree's in. So I want to do exactly that. Okay, cool. What type of job do you want to do? So if I uh, pick a random student, and say they started, they studied marketing. Marketing is a pretty good example. Marketing students are like, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> Whereas if you have an accounting and finance student, they're like, well, I know what to do. I'm going to do accounting and finance. That's why I studied it. So with the marketing student, they'll be like, I'm going to do marketing. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. What type of marketing? Brand marketing, communications, digital marketing, media management, blah, 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 all kinds of different types of jobs because these are really broad, right? The industry, if you imagine, is like an umbrella and underneath you've got all these little, uh, makes me think of Australia. So you've got all these little corks. That, that's a hat, isn't it? So they have a hat and they have all these little corks. Makes me think of Crocodile Dundee. So you've got all these different types of jobs that you can do. Now bearing in mind, and we're gonna talk about these in the coming days when I tell you about what vacancies to choose and what jobs to apply to. You can do other jobs, but when you first set out, when you set out to do something, you need to know what it is that you want to do. And of course, guys, if you're watching this, uh, throw up your questions, throw some comments, say hello, send me some love. And once I'm finished, I'm going to go and check the comments and then start answering the questions. So ask anything you can, because while I'm here, you've got me. I'll answer any questions that you want. Of course, when I'm gone, I'm gone. So you have, need to have a really clear idea of the job that it is that you want to do. The reason being is you don't go on holiday and when someone says, hey, Mike, where are you going? You're like, I don't know, I'm just getting a plane. That's the same thing as thinking, what job am I going to do? Well, whatever comes along. Where did the plane go? It went to Iceland. Oh, that's nice. I don't like snow. So the point is, if you don't know where you're going, then you're going to have a really confusing time before you even get started. Because right now we're just planning. We haven't done anything. If you're saying, when should I start applying? Then you haven't applied. You probably haven't applied for any jobs. But you've kind of done one or two and just gone, oh, I can't be bothered. What's question number two? Do people want what you are offering? So say, for example, you turn around to me and say, do you know what, Mike? I really want to work in agricultural engineering. I'd be like, dude, that's awesome. It's like tractors and working on fit, I don't even understand. What do you want to do? Now the point is the market will only give what there is a demand for, right? So if somebody turns around and there are two really important things to think about, and I'll repeat this, 
do people want what you are giving? So number one, will you get sponsored? Number two, will you be paid enough? And the two are kind of related. So something that seems to come up a lot is people go, I know what I'll do. I'm just going to apply for jobs on the shortage occupation list because the UK is short of those jobs. So I'll get a job. Simple, right? If it was that simple, then all the computer scientists, all of the engineers and all of the medical students would just get jobs in the UK. Surely that would be true. And yet it's not because of course the shortage occupation list is for people who have a number of years of experience, not as a fresh graduate. So say you're deciding to do an agricultural engineering job. Just, just run with me here. What would I do? Well, first of all, I try and see if there's a demand. It's like, again, me going on holiday. I'm going to see if there's any hotels. Is there anything for me to do? Are there nice places to eat? Is there is it entertaining? I can remember going to Fuerteventura, which is near to Tenerife. It's a little island off the coast of Africa. And uh, we went there in December. It was kind of all right. It was cheap. But do you know what? It was so boring because there was nothing to do. We went in December because we didn't want to be at home, it was really cold. I have to admit in Fuerteventura it wasn't much warmer, but what happened was all, all of the all of the exciting stuff was shut. So the tours were just rubbish. Like they were really bad and I didn't don't blame the tour guides. It's just there was nothing to see and it was like 19 degrees and windy and there was loads of sand. But the point that I'm trying to make is if I wanted to be an agricultural engineer, probably the first thing that I would do, I'd go on a big job site, say for example Indeed, that's probably the site all of you know. And then I'd look up agricultural engineers and probably I'd find quite a lot of jobs because it's Indeed, right? If there is a job it will be on Indeed. But then what I do is I would look at the companies and then I just search them on the sponsorship list. So you can either type in tier two and tier five sponsorship list or if you want to use something that's free and easy to use, you can use an app which we actually created. It's just called sponsortier2.com. So you just go to sponsortier2.com and you're just like, uh, okay, does blah blah incorporated sponsor? No. And I start going through that list i wouldn't do ever all of the companies but i might do five or ten if none of those companies are sponsoring visas then i'm going to start to think uh hold on i might want to be an agricultural engineer but no one's going to sponsor my visa this might not be a good thing to do the next thing to think about is salary so currently a tier two job needs a minimum salary of twenty thousand eight hundred pounds so just the other day i was doing a focus group with a number of uh creative students marketing students uh different types of sort of art students and they were saying I want to work in advertising or PR or HR or media or whatever I said you know what dude that's so cool that's awesome you want to be really creative and you want to make stuff great but you're not going to get paid enough the reason being is that there are certain industries particular accountant accountancy finance professional services investment banking that pay high starting salaries now this could be anywhere from like eighteen thousand pounds to forty five thousand pounds the rough average is about twenty eight to thirty two thousand pounds point is it's above the threshold now actually a funny little fact is every job is different twenty thousand eight hundred pounds is just a rough number and i don't want to really bore you of all the statistics what i'm trying to say to you is do those companies that you want a job for do they sponsor do they pay enough if they're paying you £15,000 a year, then however much you want a job and even however much they want to give you the job, it's not going to happen, is it? So the third question I want you to think about, uh, and this might seem like a really silly question, but I've seen this, guys, thousands of times speaking to students. And they will say, when should I start applying? And I just go, why haven't you started applying? And they'll go, oh, well, my, you know, my CV's not ready and uh, I'm not really confident about interviews and oh, I'm not sure about online tests. And basically they come up with, and I completely understand that these are valid fears and they're kind of excuses, right? Because what they're saying is, I'm really scared that I'm going to fail. I'm scared that I'm not going to be good enough or I'm going to get an interview or I'm going to get this and I'm just going to fail. The truth is, you're going to fail, right? You might be looking at this going, oh. <laughs> and the way that you're going to get over failure is you're going to do some more. You're going to apply to some more companies. You're going to do some more stuff and you're going to get better and better and better and better. I remember the first time that I had to uh, speak in public, I think I was about 26 and I had to go out and, and speak to a, about a thousand people, right? I was so scared. I was terrified. I was really shy. You might not be able to guess it now, but I was really shy. I just sort of, I didn't have a lot of self-confidence and um, it was in a new job and my boss just said to me, you can speak to them. 
right? And the reason was, was basically because my English was the best. And he said, you go and speak to him. So I practiced and I practiced a presentation and I got someone to look at it. And I must have run through that presentation. It was like, and I had uh, flashcards, right? Just cards that you go through and they're like, hi, my name's Mike. And I'm from Job Red English. Right? It was just, I mean, they didn't notice. They didn't, to be honest, they didn't care. It's fine. They didn't boo me off the stage. But actually, when I got up there and I did it, I was much better because I'd practiced so many times. I was nervous and like I was sweating a little bit, and but I'd had so much practice. And what I'm trying to say to you is, and this is really the third point or the third question, which is like, be honest with yourself. Why haven't you started applying? Like, what's the reason? I'm not in the UK so what but are you coming well cool Just get some practice in oh i'm doing my dissertation so what i mean are you doing your dissertation for 16 hours a day oh i've been really busy with my studies so what why are you here studying in the first place if you really want to get a job in the uk then surely you need to study less and apply more right because then you're just Look, if you just want to get a degree, then that's cool. But if your end goal, like, what do you want to do? Thinking back to that first question, what do you want to do? And do people want what you're offering? If what you want to do is get a job in the UK, then that becomes super easy. And you just apply for anybody who will sponsor you, right? You just apply for lots of different jobs. You're like, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And we're going to talk about it in the coming days. We're going to talk about CVs and cover letters and online to everything. We're going to, because these 21 days, we're going to cover those questions. But I want to tell you, like, perfect is the enemy of good. And hundreds of thousands of international students have gone back to their home country and really just gone, damn, I wish I'd just applied for more jobs. It's really as simple as that. It's a numbers game. Now, if any of you are sitting at home, you're like, well, I've applied for hundreds of jobs and no one's ever got back to me. Uh-uh, no. I've heard that one as well right and what that means is the way that you're applying the method that you're using is rubbish right if you're like i've applied hundreds of times and no one's got back to me well then the way that you're applying is crap and you need a different method and a lot of times it's one click applying so like indeed linkedin they're like apply 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 and it's like dude if it's easy for you, it's going to be easy for everybody. If it's easy for everybody, then it's going to be really hard for you because no one's going to be able to see you. No one's going to be able to sort of pick you out of the 3,000 people who just went, oh. If something's actually really hard to do, that's awesome for you because it means not a lot of people are going to do it. If you like got to, you got to do the CV and then the cover letter, then you've got to answer these five questions and blah, 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 blah. You'll find the reason why employers do that is partly because they just get rid of the time wasters right they're just kind of going ah oh, let's let's just make it a little bit more difficult so just to recap that was the three questions that you need to ask before uh when you're thinking like when should i start when should i but mike when should i start now if you can answer those three questions what do i want to do like where what's my destination where am i going uh do people want what i'm offering so i'm doing a bit of research about do the companies I want, you know, the companies I want to work for, will they sponsor me? And my job, what's the average salary? Like, is it going to pay enough? If it's not, then sorry, go and apply for a different job. And lastly, just thinking, why haven't I started applying? And dudes, just be really honest with yourself. There's no need to beat yourself up and be like, oh, I wish I'm not. Like, it doesn't matter because, you know, all we've got is today. All we've got is right now. All you've got is like straight after this session. And I'm going to talk about it in a second, like what you should go off and do uh, and before you come come back tomorrow for day two it's like just think oh dude like let me just sit here for an hour and just figure out really what i want to do let me just switch off my phone not check my email not kind of do anything even disconnect the wi-fi and just sit in a word doc and go what do i want to do uh uh okay so i've, I've figured out this do they want what i'm offering uh, and also why haven't i started applying well, I'm doing something now. Because guys, if you're here now, then you want to change something. If you're watching me right now, you're kind of unhappy with what you're doing. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching me. You're like, oh, oh Mike, but I wish I was doing a bit more. And maybe you're looking for an easy answer. I don't know. So what should you do? Papa! So I've just told you those three questions. You're like, oh my God, I need to do something now. So what I want you to do is, you know, straight after this video, of course, first of all, come back <laughs> for day two, which is going to be, what's it going to be? Oh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. when we're going to talk about 
CVs, it's going to be interesting. So like, oh, I need to do a CV. I'm going to tell you all about that tomorrow. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do. So I want you to think about three different jobs that you want to do and find 10 different companies. Three jobs, 10 companies. Three jobs, 10 companies. Okay, I'll stop. You get the idea. Now, you don't have to stick to those jobs, but at least you've got somewhere to start. And go and do some research. I look at Indeed. So say you want to be a graphic designer. You're like, sweet. And you go and look on Indeed. And then you go and see, oh, is it going to pay enough? And there's like, oh my God, that job pays 40 grand a year, but they need 10 years experience. Oh, okay. So you look at entry level roles, but go and start doing doing something. Go and start going and having an, an experience. Okay. So the guys, so what I wanted to say to you is come back tomorrow when we're going to be talking about writing a CV and basically what kind of CV should I have? This is like the second question. And people are like, Mike, what kind of CV should I have? An exploding one. No, I mean, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't send exploding CVs. It's, yeah, it's just not a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to talk about that and I'm going to answer some more questions and give you some methods around that. So that's me. Also, guys, if you found this really useful, then, you know, share the love. Share it with your friends. Be like, dude, I've just seen this guy and he was totally awesome. Um, you know, but just come along for day two. Okay, cool. So uh, that's everything from us. Join us tomorrow for day two. We're going to talk all about CVs and I will see you there. Bye.